Hey everybody, it's Brad here from RoboFlow, and uh, I'm here to share with you a new open source project that we released called RoboFlow Video Inference. And the inspiration for this actually comes from another YouTube video that I created, uh, the no-code computer vision tutorial. And in it, I had these visualizations of the models that we created uh, showing the bounding box predictions across a bunch of videos that I took at the aquarium. Um, people asked how they could create these visualizations on their own. Uh, and the, the, prom the premise is pretty simple. You slice the video up into individual component frames. You run prediction on those frames, and then you stitch those back together into a resulting video at the end. Um, to make that easier though, uh, we've created an open source repo uh, that you can go to uh, github.com slash roboflow AI slash video dash inference. Uh, and we have a shell script in here that performs those steps for you. So if you scroll down, you can see example, an example of this output that's actually using that same model from uh, the no-code tutorial, uh, and then some documentation on how to install it, uh, what the requirements are, and then a whole bunch of different options. Uh, so in this video, uh, I'm gonna walk you through all the way from uh, cloning the repo to uh, creating some uh, videos fr uh, from our, uh, some inference videos from our source videos, uh, and then how to use some of these options. Um, so we're gonna be using RoboFlow to do all this, and RoboFlow is uh, everything that you need to build computer vision into your application, even if you're not an expert. So our target market is uh, computer scientists, software engineers, um, people who don't have a PhD in computer vision, or people who do and just don't have time for uh, some of this kind of low, these low level tasks they wanna be focusing on uh, the actual hard parts rather than uh, writing shell scripts to convert data formats around and whatnot. Um, so if that sounds like you, uh, just go to roboflow.com uh, and you can create a free account um, and uh, get get started right away. Um, the, the parts that I'm gonna show you today involve um, RoboFlow train and, and, and deploy. Um, we also have some other steps that help with other parts of the computer vision process, but uh, today we're, we're squarely in this part of, of the puzzle. Um, so once you've created a RoboFlow account, if you go to your account section and go to RoboFlow API, you'll be able to pull your API key um, that'll give you your uh, scripts access to your RoboFlow account via our API. Um, so if I click copy here uh, and open up my terminal, um, I can type export RoboFlow key equals and then paste that in and hit enter. Um, and then that'll be how my script knows how to access my RoboFlow account with my privately trained models. Um, I've already done that, so my terminal is already set up. Um, the other thing we're gonna need to do is clone this repo. Um, so if you go to the GitHub repo and copy that command, um, you should be able to clone that in there. So we've got a fresh copy um, of that and I will just open up this repo and show you what's in there. Um, so uh, on my desktop, I've got two folders. I've got a fish video that we're gonna do inference on, um, and that looks a little something like this. Uh, should look pretty familiar. This is just the video that I took at the aquarium. Um, I'm gonna move that into um, the repo that I just cloned. And then I've got the repo um, that contains just a couple of, of shell scripts and a readme. Um, and fur.sh is the real meat of this. Um, this is what we are going to be using um, to create our video previews um, with our predictions from our model. Um, if you wanna edit that uh, and customize this, uh, maybe to use your own model instead of using the one that you trained on RoboFlow, um, there's instructions in the readme for how to change this uh, shell script to, to customize it to whatever you need. Um, okay, so the last thing that you're gonna need is a trained model. Um, and luckily, uh, RoboFlow can help you there. Um, so if you go to docs.roboflow.com slash train, you'll be able to read all the documentation for how to train a model within RoboFlow. This is currently in private beta, but within the next few weeks, we're gonna be opening this up to everybody. So hopefully by the time that you watch this video, you'll be able to follow along. Uh, and if not, uh, just go ahead and request access in the app and we are letting in new people every day. Um, once we're done training the model, um, then we are going to use the hosted API, 
which is an infinitely scalable um, API that we create on our servers where you can pass in an image and get back predictions from your model. Uh, and this is actually pretty cool because it can scale up to infinity. And in fact, we uh, had one of our projects featured on the front page of Hacker News and Reddit at the same time a couple weeks ago, and the inference server performed wonderfully. Uh, didn't skip a beat and didn't even seem to notice that it was on the front page of Hacker News uh, and everything stayed up and running and, and it worked great. Uh, sometimes that won't work though, um, and so we also have options for deploying to, onto an edge device like an NVIDIA Jetson uh, and directly into a web browser with TensorFlow.js. Um, we're not going to cover those two things in the video today, but if you're interested, check out the RoboFlow docs. And we are also adding more deployment targets um, very shortly. So I've trained a model on the public aquarium data set, which is actually the data set that I collected to create that no-code video that uh, I started out by, by showing earlier, um, you can go to public.roboflow.com slash object detection slash aquarium to download it yourself. Um, but I have gone ahead and uh, cloned that into my RoboFlow account and trained a model. So my model's done pretty good. I've got 77% map. Um, but what I actually wanna get here is my model ID. So there's a few different ways to use your model, but if you click the curl command, um, it'll show you uh, the script that you would need to uh, infer on a single image from the command line. Um, and that has your model ID in here. So this is based on the model name, which I, mine is called Aquarium Combined, uh, and then the version. So this is the third export that I have of this, of this data set. Um, and it's also prefixed with your organization identifier. So for me, that's RoboFlow RF. Um, so if I copy that uh, and then go back to my terminal, um, we should be able to use that with the infer.sh script. So I'll cd into that video inference folder that I just cloned. Um, and then we're going to use this infer.sh script. If I try and invoke that with no arguments, it'll give me a nice help message uh, that tells me what all the arguments are um, and how I can use it. And so you see it requires exactly three um, positional uh, arguments. We need the model ID, which is what I just paid, copied to my clipboard. We need the video in, um, which is that uh, img3196.mov um, that, that I just copied over into here. And I need the output name, which uh, can be essentially any video file that you want. Um, we support exporting to uh, any format that FFmpeg supports. So that could be uh, MP4, an MOV, or even a GIF, um, which we'll show in, in a little bit. Um, so to, to do this in the most basic way, um, we are going to call dot slash infer.sh. We'll paste in our model name. We will in, uh, have our input movie, and then we'll just call this default.mov for the output. And when I hit enter, uh, what that'll do is it'll read in that video file. It'll split it up into individual component frames, and then it's going to send those in parallel to the RoboFlow API to get predictions from my model. So here it started started inferring. By default, uh, it infers on eight frames at a time. Uh, if you have a beefy machine uh, and a fast network connection, you can probably increase that to eke out some more speed um, with some of the parameters that we'll look at in a second. Um, so then once it's done inferring on, on those frames, uh, it'll stitch them back together into a video. And here in a second, um, yep, we're done. So we've now got our default.mov video, which I can um, see my model's predictions on. Uh, and so you'll note a few things here. So first, um, by default, it's going to speed up that video a little bit. So this is going to take in frames at six frames per second and output them at 24 frames per second by default, which gives us a nice little time lapse effect. Um, we can change those options in the script, um, which we'll do here shortly, um, if we want a different effect. Um, okay, so let's look at changing options. So a couple of things that I noticed about that output were the lines were pretty thin um, compared to the size of the video. Um, it, and also, uh, if you noticed, um, the fish and sharks were different colors, but they weren't labeled. So if I didn't know what I was looking at, why, like why those were blue or yellow, um, I, I might be a little bit confused. So maybe I want those names to actually be output, outputted. Um, and then also, um, I think this video is a bit too big for my purposes. Uh, like if I was gonna embed 
uh, on uh, a GitHub repo, I wouldn't want something such high resolution. I'd want a, a smaller file size. So let's go down to the options that we can pass uh, and see how we would change those things to get a, a different output. Um, so I touched on a few things. I said we wanted a thicker stroke. Um, so it looks like we can pass in this dash dash stroke option. We wanted labels, um, so we can enable that here. Uh, and then we don't want the um, time lapse effect for this, I think. So instead of uh, the frame rate coming in at six frames per second and coming out at 24, let's make the uh, input and output both be 24 frames per second. And then that will mean that the output video will have the exact same length as the input video. Uh, and then we're gonna downsize it. Um, I think we'll do maybe downsize it by 4x. Um, we'll we'll kind of have to try it out and see if that works out. Um, and then um, we are going to increase the parallelism with which we hit the model to speed up that inference speed just a little bit. Um, so we'll come back in here. This was the command that we did before. Um, first, we'll turn on the labels. So to do that, I just type dash dash labels. And then the stroke, instead of being five, let's make it Oh, I don't know, 10. Um, that actually might be a little bit thick because if we're also gonna downsize the video, 4X, um, that'll make the stroke be four times two, eight times bigger. Um, maybe, maybe let's only downsize the video twice instead of four times. Um, so for that, we'll do scale two and spell scale right and um, parallel, let's do, instead of the default of eight, let's do 32. Um, and I think those were all of the options that we talked about doing, but let's also, instead of calling it uh, default.mov, let's call it uh, scaled-labeled, and let's just make it a GIF, um, just for fun, just to show that we can do different output formats. So if I hit enter, um, this will go through that same sort of process. It's gonna split out that uh, input video into frames. And then now it's gonna pass those into the model uh, 32 at a time. Uh, I forgot the frame rate actually. Um, let's go back and do dash dash FPS uh, underscore in 24. And let's call this 24 so that we can look at that other one while it's doing that. So while that's processing that, let's go and actually look at that uh, other one that the scaled label.gif to see. Um, this is a, a 21 megabyte GIF, um, so still quite large. Uh, but we can see this and we can see that uh, it has indeed made those lines thicker and uh, it's labeled the fish and the sharks differently. And now this is a GIF file. Um, it's still quite fast because uh, we hadn't done that different frame rate. Um, but while we've been looking at it, this other one processed, this one is gonna be 214 frames. Now we've got this 24 megabyte one that here we can see it's 60 megabytes instead. And so that's the speed of the original video coming through here. Um, so I think uh, these lines are actually a little bit thick. I think this video is actually a little bit large with that 60, uh, 60 megabyte file size. So let's do a, a third option here. Um, we are going to do um, so we'll go back up here and we'll do like final.mov. We'll go ahead and instead of stroke 10, we'll go down to let's say stroke three. We'll scale this down and actually do that four. Um, and then that actually seemed a bit slow. So let's try and do 30 FPS. Um, and let's see what that looks like uh, for our final.mov. So again, this is gonna go through, chop it up, um, send those all through uh, to the model. This is actually gonna be more frames because we took more of those input frames. I think my iPhone actually recorded at faster than 24 frames per second. Uh, and then it's got those done, compiled them into our final.mov. Look at that, this is only 2.2 megabytes because this is gonna be a very uh, small resolution image. And now um, we've got our sharks and our fish swimming through, and we've got a nicely labeled video. So hopefully this helps you visualize the output of your computer vision models. Uh, we'd love to help you uh, do that with RoboFlow. And uh, if you have any comments uh, or questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. 
And don't forget to subscribe for more cool computer vision content. We've got some cool features coming down the pipeline that I can't wait to share with you. So have a great one.